Did the Matrix foreshadow reality? Let's discuss. So, I have seen the Matrix a few years ago for the first time. Not after it came out, but like, it was just a movie that like people just said it was good. And also, online, the reviews were just there where people just said, oh yeah, you can see it. But I wasn't really intrigued by the trailer, it just looked old to me. Basically a 
simulation. It's just a very simplified version of reality we use to predict reality and then gain knowledge out of this whenever the predictions of the model actually are similar to what reality actually turns out to be. And this means we are already kind of running simulations, just not on a very big scale. And if we now assume that future human civilizations will also run simulations, then they probably will run, they will probably combine the both, the both assumptions we now made. The first being that we have a simulated reality, a version of a simulated reality that is indistinguishable from real reality, and the second of all, that we, that the future humans would also run simulations. Now, is it necessary that these humans are in the future? Not necessarily. They could also be in the past. It doesn't. In terms of simulation itself, it it's not that it doesn't really matter, but it's just that we then don't know. Because if we assume that, if we just assume these things, then the conclusion is that we don't know if we cannot know if we actually live in one of these simulated realities. And it doesn't really matter if humans created the simulated realities. So these were basically the assumptions of simulation theory and also the conclusion of simulation theory that um, the thing is that obviously still the real reality could still exist and also might still exist. The problem is just that there is only one real reality and the number of simulations is basically it's not infinite because it still takes up resources such as computing power and energy but I mean this is also kind of an assumption that the energy not the energy but the processing power also increases it's also implied in the assumption that the simulated worlds we will be able to create um, kind of just get better so the underlying assumption is obviously Moore's law which just says that at a certain speed in the past exponential but nowadays not so much anymore that the computing power of human technologies just increases especially on chips now the conclusion is then that we don't just don't know if we live in a simulated reality or not and also we basically have no way to find out because the simulated reality is indistinguishable therefore even if we the problem is this even if we just like in in the Truman show discovered that the, the, that the reality we live in is actually not the reality but it's just a simulated reality I mean who says that that's not part of the entire plot who says that it's not part of the plot that some people eventually discover this thing called simulation theory and talk about it and then spread the word about it like Elon Musk for example does these days and then like in 10 years from now they may someone who is like there may be someone who is like yeah we actually live in a simulated reality and here are the proofs it's just it doesn't make any difference it doesn't make any difference whether someone finds out about the simulated reality because if it's a simulated reality then it's simulated that means everything we do is kind of it doesn't really mean that it's it's totally predictable and it's like running as a computer game but it just means that there is an outer layer of realness and we don't live in this outer layer of realness and even if we discover this outer layer of realness the problem is this if all these assumptions are true and we actually lived in a simulated reality and the, the chances obviously are that we don't live in the real world because there will be much more simulated realities than real realities and therefore the problem is that why not just combine two simulated realities and put the one simulated reality into another one into another one into another one therefore basically creating infinite layers of reality to, of realities to discover around this world and here yeah, well that's basically it so now the plot of someone discovering that the real that the reality you live in or he lives in name it with the name Neo basically is now the big similar similarity and also kind of the connection to the matrix 
because in the Matrix, here's the basic plot of the Matrix. In the Matrix, Neo seems or finds out that a few things are off. And then he obviously has the choice to either go with the blue pill or the red pill. With the red pill finding out, or with the meaning of the red pill being finding out that the blue reality or the reality up to this point he lived in the matrix is not real. That actually what is happening is that um, machines are now reigning or, or ruling the world and basically harvesting humans for energy. And I mean if you think about it the concept is pretty odd. Why would some machines harvest humans for energy? But at the same time what exactly do we do with animals? We basically grow them in plants and harvest them for meat or energy or milk or something else. So basically uh, the only difference is that these humans still live and live in a simulated reality whereas we for example don't even create simulated realities for pigs and therefore just all the animals we uh, kind of grow as plants and then just kill these don't even enjoy the benefits of having a matrix because they just live in a real reality and the real reality is just getting killed and yeah well that's that so the concept I think is not entirely off also the concept of a um, kind of more intelligent or more advanced race or not really race because race is something that is only connected to kind of living beings I would say but who says that for example an AI created in the future or also created now and still living in the future doesn't have the same characteristics as a human I mean if you think about it it's kind of obvious it's not kind of obvious but humans are basically the most advanced machines in the universe the most advanced machines at least we know about we are biological machines. I mean, the fact that we are organic doesn't do anything. We could also be made out of metal. What would be the difference? The difference is just that we think of machines being made out of metal and machines being computer programs and something like this because we are humans and we are social and we are friendly and yeah, well, but we also kill other humans. So therefore, just this fact that, I mean, the machines in the Matrix, for example, they at least don't kill all the humans, but they just harvest them for energy. But what do we do to other humans? We just kill other humans. Um, which is something that happened throughout history, again and again, I would say. And therefore, it's completely ridiculous to be like, oh yeah, the evil machine. It's not completely ridiculous. Obviously, there is still a danger, but... And also, this already goes into discussing dangers of AI or dangers of creating artificial intelligence that just might be smarter than all the humans on Earth. Or just might be something different, and something we cannot really understand. And this is basically also kind of... I mean, in the Matrix, the machines are not necessarily... The machines are like machines. They are like... The machines we have nowadays just like... Um, basically being small beings and therefore just doing random things like ruling the world but it's not that there is like one big intelligence I mean there is kind of at the end of the matrix and also in the other, in the other parts of the matrix so matrix 2 is called reloaded I guess and matrix 3 I don't exactly know the title also matrix 4 is coming out soon I guess but now Let's first of all conclude. The similarity, the big similarity in between uh, the simulation theory and also the things uh, we discussed about simulation theory and the plot of the matrix is the fact that you can actually discover an outer layer of reality. So basically a reality that is embedded in another reality. Because the same thing is true for the matrix. Who says that the matrix, so the matrix obviously is reality one. Reality one with being the embedded reality. And then we actually can reach the next level of reality, which is then the level of reality where machines rule the world. But if you think about it, this could also just be another layer. Because, I mean, do machines really, really rule the world and be like, and look like, basically,
basically. Um, I don't know the word, but I mean, the machines in, in the Matrix just look ridiculous. I mean, what does a machine in real life or a more real machine look like? It, it, would, it would just be like uh, basically a, a server center. That's it. These are just computers connected to a power grid and connected to the internet. They would just host the programs that run on there. But it's not like they are all machines who are like also in Terminator. I mean, that there will be the fact that there will be, I mean, it doesn't really make sense for these machines to have like individual bodies. I mean, it could make sense. I mean, there are many layers to this discussion, I guess. So now, the big similarity is obviously the messed up reality, so the embedded reality. And also the fact that within the Matrix, we never know which layer of reality. I mean, this is not part of the plot of the Matrix, but also kind of, because um, in, the, in the next levels, so in the next parts of the movie, I, so it was quite some time ago, but I think that actually then within the re reality, um, Neo then lives in, Yeah, there's basically this thing that he also then can... So, first of all, Neo can, like, has, like, superpowers in in the Matrix. But obviously, he also gains superpowers out of the Matrix because he then believes in it and something like this. This would be a kind of proof that it's still another simulated reality and still another version. Another, another version, but just another layer of the Matrix. And it kind of turns out in these movies so not really talking about the first movie anymore, but much more about all of them. It turns out that the plot of Neo being the chosen one, and then um, basically fighting the machines, is just another subplot. It's just another plot that happens on a frequent basis, basically. There have been many Neos before Neo, and there will be many Neos after Neo. So this is basically just another plot that gives humans hope every now and then to, I mean, it's just, it's basically just a game. The machines play with the human mind and they wouldn't even have to. They could also just put them on the final dopamine release, but that obviously is something that probably wouldn't work because it just doesn't work very well with the human brain because you just get, like, this is basically what happens if you put people on drugs too much. Well, they are not people on drugs, but Maybe that's the reason they actually have to create uh, something, something bigger, something like basically Neo in the Matrix is also kind of a Jesus figure if you think about it. Like, I mean, this concept is a general concept. The one, the one hero being the chosen one going on a journey. This is basically the, the basic concept of every single story. Is what you serve. Like, here's the problem. Then there's someone who has to actually do something about the problem. Then there is maybe a resolution to all of it. But kind of creating plots like these is then just part of the matrix. And what we could discover in Matrix 4, for example, is that there is just another matrix, another layer of matrix. And it just goes on and on because it's also like an infinite, um, an infinite concept for making sequels. Because you just say, Things. I mean, it's just a general concept for making sequels apart from the Matrix. Just stating that the reality we, as of now, have perceived or we're able to perceive is just part of something even bigger. And when it comes to the Matrix, the thing being, being even bigger is just another Matrix, another layer of Matrix. And within, like, other movies like James Bond, for example, what is the basic plot of many James Bond movies, there is an evil villain, and then in the next movie you discover that the evil villain was just part of a bigger clan of villains, and there is a bigger clan of villains, where, I mean, this goes on and on and on. It's just a hierarchy. You just create a hierarchy and you just state that the things you already got to know about this world are not as true as you think, but there is more. And that's the basic concept of maybe The Matrix 4. 